may seem self-explanatory, but there's more of the right of preparation than just spiritually loosening up our muscles. In it, we open ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit, and the liturgy prepares us materially and spiritually for the Eucharistic presence of Jesus. I'm Father Kevin, and this is a great day for a run, and you're watching the Kurban Explain. According to one interpretation, the rite of preparation is a symbolic celebration of the suffering, death, and burial of Jesus. The preparation reminds us of how Jesus sent Peter and John ahead of the others saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat of it. Just as Peter and John prepare the Passover feast, the celibate readies the Eucharistic feast for all those gathered, and in tandem, we ready our hearts to receive our Eucharistic Lord. This is one of two special niches found on either side of the sanctuary called Betgaze. This is the other one. The bread and wine are prepared at the Betgaze and brought up to the Madbaha by the celebrant. He moves up from the Bema to the Madbaha, where the heavenly sacrifice is to take place. As the bread and wine are brought to the Madbaha, they are held up before the altar in the form of a cross symbolizing the crucifixion of Jesus, and then they are covered with the shoshap on the altar symbolizing the burial of the body of Jesus. As the mysteries are presented at the altar, the community sings the Onisa di Rase, or the Anthem of Mysteries. As a church, we join with the angels and saints singing God is holy, holy forever, as a symbol of a song sung by the souls of the righteous as they entered paradise with our Lord. Wait, pause. What? There's a mistake in the Kurbana. What are you talking about? You know the part of the Onisa Terrace where we say, Here is our Lord? That part? Well, the bread and wine hasn't become the Eucharist yet, so how can we call it the body and blood of Christ? Well, actually... Actually, I don't know. Hey, guys! Ah! ah! What, are you, what are you doing here? If you're wondering why I'm here, it's to correct the record. Who are you talking to? Well, actually, you guys have a really good question. At one point, they were going to correct the prayers because calling it the body and blood of Christ before consecration, they thought it was a heresy. So, why isn't it? Well, they determined that it's the use of productive language. This means that you're talking about things that are sure to happen in the future as though they've already happened now. But it still hasn't happened yet. Well, the other thing about the liturgy is that it's not confined to historical time. This means that the liturgy goes beyond the ideas of the past, present, and the future. And what that means is that the Kurbana sacrifice is the same sacrifice that Christ did on the cross all those years ago, happening now. So the Kurbana is like... time travel? Yeah, basically. While the choir sings the Onisa de Rase, the celebrant washes his hands. Now this is not really about germs or hygiene, but rather it symbolizes the washing away of sins, not just of the celebrant, but of all those gathered for the liturgy. Now before the priest enters the sanctuary, as a people, we pray the profession of faith, the creed. This prayer encompasses the entire work of salvation from the beginning to the end of creation and is an expression of our belief in, well, everything we believe in as a church. Hey, it's me again. Before the celebrant enters into the sanctuary, I just want to point out how significant it is that the celebrant and all the other ministers are reciting the creed as they stand before the sanctuary. Just as the thief who was crucified at Jesus' side confessed his faith in him and entered into heaven, this moment symbolizes that our faith in God allows us to enter into heaven, which we see almost immediately as the celebrant ascends into the madbaha, the symbol of heaven in the Qurbana. 
As a celebrant approaches the altar, he takes three deep bows, entering the sanctuary with great reverence. He then kisses the altar in the middle and on the right and left sides as a sign of love and respect to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We offer the Holy Kirbana for many reasons, to respond to the command of Christ, but also for the forgiveness of sins, the salvation of souls, and the reconciliation of the whole world. And now, the celebrant is at the Madbaha. It's game time.